I've got some big news for you today. Canon Watch says that Canon is going to be introducing a video-centric EOS R5 camera in much the same way that Panasonic released the video version of the S1 in the S1H. Did I buy the wrong camera? Is this new video-centric camera my new perfect camera? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And don't forget, I'm giving away a Canon R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below. I figured this news was interesting and important enough to break it on my lunch break, so please forgive any errors. I'm trying to rush this one out the door. Canon Watch says that Canon's going to be introducing a video-centric EOS R5 camera in much the same way that Panasonic released a video-centric version of the S1 in the S1H late last year. The R5 video-centric camera will have the same sensor with about 24 megapixels. It will also have 4K 120 like the R5, do 2.8K super sampling Super 35, and use heat sinks, which were missing in the R5 and R6. There's no mention of other video modes, but I'd expect 4K HQ to be back, along with 4K 60 and 8K. The high resolution body? Well, I'm calling that one the R5R, and it will have the same frame rate as the R5, but be capable of up to 90 megapixels. Low light performance of both cameras will be better than the R6, which is impressive considering the R5R's high megapixels. This along with the rumored high resolution RF body looks to offer Canon customers the same flexibility as Canasonic, Canasonics, Panasonic's S series. Hmm, subliminal there? I don't know. Anyhow, the standard R5 equates to the S1, the high megapixel camera equates to the S1R, and the video centric camera relates to the S1H. Now, while rumors on the R5 were circulating, I'd hoped Canon would replicate the Pan what Panasonic did with the S series instead of trying to do everything in one camera. Now, there's no mention of any architecture changes or how the heat sinks will be employed, or whether there's going to be heat pipes or anything like that but a definite improvement over the current offering, if true. But how likely is this information? Did someone just look at Panasonic offerings and troll Canon Watch? Canon Rumors carried the highlights of the story from Canon Watch and classified the story as a CR1. This means that it comes from unknown sources and they haven't had any validation yet, so don't get your hopes up too much. But it's still exciting. It's a great conversation piece. The R5 makes more sense with these um, configurations or different models. I'll keep an eye on this one as a video-centric R5 would be the perfect camera for ordinary filmmakers who are unable to deal with the overheat limits. I wonder if Canon is also going to remove the record limits in the video-centric R5. What do you think? Will we see the R5R in the R5H? Or are we being trolled by someone? Let me know in the comments section down below. And by the way, those names that I'm using, the R5R and the R5H, those aren't the real names. I'm just drawing attention to the same naming convention Panasonic uses for illustration purposes. Well, in this brief episode of Behind the Scenes, I want to talk to you a little bit of why I'm publishing this news story now instead of at 7 a.m. Tuesday time or 7 a.m. Eastern time. And the reason I did this is I thought, well, this is big enough news. This is great for you to consume on your lunch break or your dinner if you're in Europe and if you're just waking up in Asia. I wanted to get this one out there. I still plan on putting out a news story tomorrow morning, depending on, of course, if we have any more information or if we have an update to the story. But I think this is really key. I would really love to see these differentiators. When I first heard about the R5, I thought, wow, it'd be really great if Canon goes ahead and replicates what Panasonic did. And I think Panasonic, what they did made a lot of sense. They gave us a hybrid stills and video camera in the S1. But then as a nod to photographers, it gave a high resolution or a high megapixel, high resolution uh, stills camera in the S1R with some video capabilities. Then about six months later, Panasonic released the S1H, which is a video-centric camera. It's a nod to those who want to produce video, and it is a truly amazing camera. Now, if Canon's doing the same thing, I think that would really help downplay this overheat issue. We'll finally get that high megapixel camera, which I expect to be, I wouldn't be surprised if they call it the, the R5R because, well, the 5D Mark IV, they had, what was it, an RS version, so they could do the, five, the R5 RS, and if they came up with a video-centric model, well, who knows what they would call it. They could call it the R5H. They definitely won't do that because that's, that's a nod to Panasonic, but they would probably give it some other designator 
I'd expect it to still have the R5 moniker, but what other designation they give it, I really don't know. But again, these are on the, these are from unknown sources. The information isn't validated, and it almost seems too good to be true. But it certainly does make sense. I'd expect this makes more sense to me rather than quickly releasing an R5 Mark II. Because the R5 is a great camera. It's it's a really amazing uh, stills hybrid camera with really good video features. Producing a high megapixel version of the R5 is a nod to those photographers that really need high megapixels and also need to be able to shoot at a decent frame rate. And then of course, taking the R5, putting in heat sinks, maybe heat pipes, I don't know how they're going to change the architecture, but there's certainly room in the camera to make improvements and then give a nod to video-centric users like myself and you watching here today, and that would be a big, big plus. So I'm really hoping that this one does pan out. As we get any updates, I'll let you know. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Canon EOS R5 full-frame full frame mirrorless camera. I'll be giving that camera away once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Long time to wait? No problem. Once I reach 20,000 subscribers, which is just 6,000 subscribers away, I'll be giving away the Cinco Lab microphone, the S6E, along with the shotgun microphone, the M3. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.